Hello and welcome to 10 p.m. with Galinsky. So good to have you here. It only happens here. Remember that every Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, super excited about our guest tonight, Gina Rugolo and Rosie, Romy Rosemont. And uh, two exciting women who are doing something really special right now. Um, before I bring them in, a couple of shout outs. Uh, yeah, I had some of these today. Unbelievable. This is, this, oof, good. Uh, Nuchas.com. Remember, that's the URL. You can order from them. They're delicious. They support the show. Also want to thank uh, the Stage Network, watchstage.com. They are simulcasting us right now. Very excited about that. VIPTalentConnect.com, they are simulcasting us as well. And a lot of our audience is from VIP Talent Connect's uh, roster of incredible students. And also uh, ActorTrade.com supporting what we do. ActorTrade is an incredible, another incredible um, app for actors who are doing self tapes and running lines with each other. So I just wanna shout out a couple of our upcoming guests this week. Tomorrow night, it's Larry Fezenden, the independent filmmaker Incredible, incredible person. Steven Henderson, brilliant actor, both stage and screen on Wednesday. And then Thursday is Ron Kuby, the civil rights and human rights lawyer. Um, and then Friday, we are gonna do a surprise guest. So last Friday, we had a great time with uh, Chad Morgan and Clayton Patterson. They came back on and then we invited our audience in as well. So we'll see what happens this week. All right, gonna bring in our guests, Gina and Romy, and get this show started. Here we go. Gina, welcome. Hi, how are you? Great. Romy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Great to see you. So I'm going to shout out a couple of the people in the um, chat to get us started. It's okay. packed already. Um, you're always welcome to shadow me and say hello to them by name as well, too. Jack Fuller. Mark David Bernbach are in the house. Steve LaRue, who I went to high school with. Jack's uh, out on the West Coast with you guys. Tennis pro, great guy. Candice is in. Lauren Herman is in. Winnie Maria, a young actress, is in. Hello, everybody. So good to see you here. Um, Jack Fuller says, best time of the day. Well, that makes me feel great. Sweet. Nice. Ronisaw Gorski's with us. Jamie Metis is with us. Zulima's with us. Jay Festa's with us. Right on, Turco Ono is with us, he's a regular. Amy Alt, she's a regular, so all right, good. We're gonna get some questions from you guys in the chat in a moment, but first, I wanna start with you guys. Um, you have created something really special. Um, Stan, tell us the name of it and tell us, I'm gonna actually pull up your uh, imagery so we can see, well, that's us right now. Uh, staying Home Cooking, it's a, celebrity recipes to benefit those in need. So my first question is great. First, it's not even a question. It's awesome that you're doing this. And was it an idea that you had and then just timed out with what's going on right now? Or did this happen as a result of the pandemic? And I know Gina, you're the one who kind of kicked the idea off. So why don't you tell us what, what was the inception? It's really exciting. Well, what happened was, you know, obviously we've all been staying home cooking and I have never really done that before. And every night I would try something new and fail or actually do all right. And, and um, so that sort of started that on the cooking front. But then I started wondering as every, the pandemic was going on, you know, gosh, how I'm, I'm by nature, I, I'm involved with a lot of charities and I think about things like that. And I was like, gosh, how are some of the organizations that I, truly love, like, how are they doing during this time? They must be really having, you know, hurting essentially. Um, and so I thought, wow, what if I could marry the two together? And then I thought, I need a partner in crime. <laughs> and, and then literally to her credit, I made one phone call and without even any hesitation, enter Romy Rosemont. I know she literally said, I have an idea. And I was like, all right, I didn't even know it. I really didn't. <laughs> But I mean, just, I knew that Gina's heart is just so big that I knew that, I mean, and to be very honest, like what, what were we all doing? And I am best and most productive when I'm busy. 
Yeah. So I, I to, to be very honest, I'm grateful to Gina for even um, thinking of me and bringing me on this. I feel like I'm riding her coattails. She's got great ideas always. And Sorry, um, we were friends since high school. Just yeah. since friends since high school. Wow. So, I mean, so, so there was that immediate connection, obviously, and it's just old friends. And so we have a shorthand. And the amazing thing was that it was a way to get the recipes. The celebrity part of it was how we could motivate people, hopefully, to donate. Yeah. And, I mean, it's so brand new. It's like what we've, I think we've done two weeks of it, right, Gina? Right. Yeah. So it, it is real. Yeah, it's it, brand new. Yeah, it's fresh. And you guys, you're in Hollywood, so you've got access to all of the cool people like yourselves. Like yourselves, um, tell us: is there are a few? We're going to go through some of the people that are on the site already. Are there a couple of people that you haven't got on the site yet that are in the queue that you can tell us about? Is that a surprise? Are you? Are there some wishful, hopeful people out there that you got a call to? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm always hopeful for people I don't know. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I've, I've been doing a lot of texting and a lot of like, so what can I do for you after you do me this enormous favor? But right. um, I mean, we've got people from, uh, from Kaylee Cuoco to Caitlin Olson to Ricky Lake to um, who, who else? Do we uh, uh, blah, 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 Dan Bukatinsky from Baker and the Beauty, Mary McCormick. Um, God, I don't know. We've had just great people already, you know, Laura San Giacomo and Amy Irving and Chris Colfer. We have Laura Boyle coming. We've had Pamela Adlon is going to be next week. And John Ford and uh, Bridget Moynihan, who's got her recipe. She, she, and, and she, oh my God, she made it and took a picture of it. So it's not like, because a lot of these times you, I mean, and I'll, I'll tip the hand, but you know, to ask them to, for the recipe, yeah. then for photo, then for this, we can't be like, and could you cook it too? Right, 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 right. So a lot of it is also trying to find a picture that matches that perfectly. But, but when people actually make it and send us a picture of it, I mean, it's fantastic. Kayla uh, Cooper just got her cocktail. Couple of things, a uh, couple of things real quick in the chat room, Amy Alts with us, Elizabeth Harder just joined us. Diane Lieb, thanks for being again here, Diane. Heather Prescott, Katha Cato, Gina Smith, Infinity TWS, Keith Davis. Katha Cato uh, yeah. was one of, I worked with her. I don't know if you ever heard of her, Katha Pfeffer. She had a improv group called Foreplay in New York and Bukatinsky was in the group. Stop. Oh, yeah, so I- I, I met Bukatinsky, we, we played husband and wife in one X. Really? Yeah, I met him. I met him when I first got into the city in 86, 87. That is fantastic. Oh, he is yeah. a delicious human. He is. And Katha is an incredible improviser and teacher, and she ran a great show. Um, fantastic. Yeah, and she's typing in now. Hey, you remember? I, we worked with Dan. Yeah. Uh, the poet Ron Cephas Jones is in, in the house right now. What comes first, the recipe or the actor, the, per the celebrity or the recipe? Do you, you go like, all right, we got a lot of Italian dishes in the queue now. We need some, I, something. I, or is it just like you want the, the celeb and see what the heck they bring? We're going after the celeb because the celeb will motivate the donations. And so, and also because it's, we're asking them um, to, to, to give us a recipe that's special to them. So for example, we had um, John Edwards do uh, his grandmother's sauce and then Vincent Spano do his dad's meatballs. So, it, you know, even though they were both Italian, they were in different weeks yeah. and there it's, you know, everybody does that in, in that I'm always looking at cookbooks and thinking and taking little bits of different recipes. Let's look at a couple of them and we'll come back to your charities in a second. Okay. But there's Laura San Giacomo. Yep. And mm -hmm. she's she has healthy one. broccoli and chickpeas and really good side dish. And, and artichoke hearts, remember that? Yeah. yeah. Artichoke hearts. Mm -hmm. And then Vincent, we just said the story and it's nice because it has a personal connection. Um, and it's funny because a lot of people started emailing right around the same time about the recipe. So we were like, wow, it's meant to be. He wrote me, he goes, I can't believe it. I was like the second or third reach out this week about a recipe. So it was like in the, in the zeitgeist for nice. him. Um, Tammy T just entered, Dorothy Edwards just entered. Dorothy's out in LA like you, she, uh, Gina, you know, I was doing some teaching with Formerly Homeless. Uh, Dorothy was my coordinator for that. She's oh, wow. Okay. A giving person. Hi, Dorothy. Then we got Henry and Stacy Winkler. Ama they're amazing people. Just How do you get somebody like Henry Winkler? I know he's uh, probably 
a warm, loving, accessible human being, but he's still um, a, a, a movie star, a really, and he's really- on, uh, He's on a TV show with my husband. So I, I, I grabbed, I, I grabbed my husband's yeah. phone. No, I mean, I've been very, um, they're all so lovely, that entire cast. And um, Henry actually of the entire cast was the first one. He's like, yep. And that's the show Barry? Yeah. And the husband is Stephen Root, who is a brilliant uh, actor. And, and um, I believe, I, I believe you have my stapler. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's, see, let's see who else. Whoops. Um, yeah, so Charlotte Charlotte Rolis, the psychic medium, she had a great matzo ball soup, chicken soup recipe. Cool. That. There's Stephen. There he is. So the the relationship. What's the re so we got dads meatballs. Then so you've got we've got some inner uh, inner channel here with you, Romy. What's Stephen's relationship with the Manhattan, the drink? Um, it was his dad's favorite, and his yeah. dad was like a really shy Wyoming cowboy. And the irony there was he always felt uncomfortable in Manhattan. So, um, but that's literally it, whenever Stephen makes one, and, and he. Th that is one of his drinks of choice, especially when he goes out. And it always reminds him of his dad, who he lost in like, I think 1986. We weren't together then, so I'm not sure. Um, wait, let's go. I'm going backwards for a second intentionally. Oh, no, I guess we, I got to go forward. Um, Korean pork chops, Amy Irving. Those are so good. I made those good. and they turned out so great. You've got to get marmalade, jelly and all kinds of things. But I'm telling you, those were delicious. Amy's a really good cook. I have to say. She's single? That's a good thing to know. For <laughs> but she's, she's a good cook. Um, uh, Turco Ono is in the chat. Michael Fompkin from VIP is in the chat. Destiny Gay just showed up. Luis is here. Um, Turco Ono has a question. What charities are you benefiting? Um, and so let's go back and take a quick look at that slide. The charities that you're benefiting. How do you choose them? How often do they rotate? Okay, so um, we're going to be rotating them for probably about every two weeks. It's was it's it's kind of rounding out to that. We have some uh, three new ones coming in the near future. But Project Angel Food, um, I saw a news piece about them and how they had lost so many um, volunteers and different things due to the various different um, restrictions that they had due to COVID nineteen and just the and they were really in need of raising money. Friends of the Family is an organization I've been involved with for a long time, and they're in Los Angeles in the Valley area, and they give so much help to underprivileged, underprivileged families, things that we don't even think about, like providing diapers um, to people, food. Um, and, and then the SAG After Foundation, we wanted to give back to the acting community in some capacity, and um, actually Courtney B. Vance was really helpful and connected us, and they've been just terrific to deal with. And also um, we're gonna be going into um, Broadway um, Cares as well. Um, yep. as another organization and obviously New York has really been affected by it in the, the theater community. So we're excited to, to um, introduce them in the near future. And it's not just actors, which is great about those, those foundations. It's everybody pretty much right. in the entertainment community, which, you know, and a lot of actors, what is it? Just a, a few percent of us, that are actually fortunate enough to make a living at it. And so this, these foundations help the ones who also are, are SAG members and are working actors, but also had a day job that is now no longer. So, yeah. you know, it's yeah. in, in that part. Yeah, and I noticed actually in looking at sort of some of the, some of the sites, they help even a, a lot of various different types of people in the industry. Um, and then the other thing that we wanted to, um, you'll see a couple really smaller, smaller charities that are really affected that we just wanted to really just help them because um, like, for example, we're going to have Glorious Pies coming, which is run by um, a wonderful woman, Joanne Lara, who um, has helped a lot of people in the autistic community um, get employed and sort of, and as a result of this, they've, they've had this great pie truck that a lot of the, the kids had a full-time job and now they've been unemployed as a result of this. And so we want to get them all back to work. I think and, what, what, and what's really good about this is that we have the opportunity that if we want to stay on a couple of charities for more than two weeks, or if we want to rotate just one in or three in or whatever, that we have the opportunity to maybe help some of the organizations that, that, that don't have as big a voice as the Actors Fund and things like that. The... Um... 
the, the, the chat room is blowing up. There's nothing but hearts and thumbs up being thrown around right now. People are saying, mm, amazing. That is so wow. cool. Such a blessing. They're ah, feeling you. They're thanks. feeling you. And somebody also just wrote, Luisa just wrote, I just made ceviche. <laughs> <laughs> um, coffee encrusted filet mignon and yes. two twini. That has, I mean, Sweet Wayne Knight, um, uh, he did a little story of that. It reminded him of, of um, when he and his wife went away. Um, I think for their honeymoon, if I remember correctly. We did Korean pork chops. Noodle Kugel. Yes. Lynn Shay, you know, she, this is sort of a thing that she literally got out of like an old school cookbook and it's just been kind of something that she's done for years. And um, so she, you know, we, we've had a few of those too that just said, hey, it's sort of an homage to the old school cookbook. Uh, for Kathy, our audience. Yeah, Kathy and Jimmy had her, her mother's um, stuffing. I mean, it's, she's called Situ Stuffing. Like, the, you know, which is amazing. It's just great. Lynn yeah. was uh, a guest on the show and um, recently, and she's awesome. She also yeah. did a meeting with us for the bench. Um, and oh, uh, chip cookies. Yeah, here's Tony Trucks is on SEAL Team on CBS, and she's great. She, um, I work with, uh, she's a client of mine, and she's always been known and uh, made a lot of friends on sets for bringing cookies and different uh, sweets. And so this one is actually um, from a friend. Um, it's sort of her friend shared the recipe. And so this is one she wanted to share. Let's shift a little bit now into, to me, so you're bringing up your client there. Um, what do you look for? This is for the actors that are watching and people who are also curious. What do you look for as a manager uh, you know, uh, when you're going to sign somebody to be on your roster? You know, what is the most, what are, what, what are maybe the two or three most important things besides they're a great talent, they're a great actor? Well, honestly, it has to start with that first. You know, I have to be excited about what I, you know, their work. And then sometimes it's just a connection. I see what I personally can do with them. You know, I could meet someone and actually think they're brilliant, but I may not know how to sell them. And so I'm not going to sign anybody that I don't know. I, I instantly make a connection and I have a vision for them and I see that we can work well together. Um, and, and also I find... Um, you know, that they, they're sort of, I, I like sort of business people as well. Like I, like Romy is an actress that is a real business person. She's really serious about what she does. She pays attention. Um, she's not a client of mine, but I always admire Romy's um, just business savvy. And I think that you have to have a little bit of that. You do your research, you know, going back to Tony Trucks is so intelligent, you know, really watches things very, very clear about, um, what she wants. And I think that's to be my right. Most people I work with have that direction. I think you need it, especially in this day and age. To Great. just to just act is not, a, not, it's not enough. Let me ask you, Gina, this is gonna be painful. You probably won't answer. Ah. Who's your favorite client that you have? Can't answer that what? one. You know what though, I, I, I love them all for different reasons. I've been fortunate, most of them I've worked with for years. I'm, I'm a boutique by choice. And um, I really care about each person as a human being, but also just, you know, I really, every time I see them, I, it's like the first time, I mean, Lynn Shea, I so admire, she will, you know, basically almost cried every job opportunity she ever has. Like it's never grows tired for her. It's like always something that she's just as excited about. So as long as she's done a page with resumes, it's like she's working on, it could be uh, independent, a one-liner, a play she did a reading as you know Robert and I got to know each other and of the bench and she yeah. and, and this is an incredible play that Robert um, has written and performed in and she read this one character and realized oh I might be the I'm not sure if I'm that person but what can I take a male character and make it a female character and she was brilliant I mean we all were kind of wowed by that and I think that's a part of again of being creative or having communication with someone and she was, she was, she was stunning. She was incredible. And she, and I'm acting with her and she's throwing things at me that I've never, you know, there's a battle between these two guys. I've been doing this show on and off for 25 years yeah. and now I'm battling a woman. So all of these things she were, was doing were, were really incredible. It was really exciting. Um, in the chat world, cat, chat room, Kathy Cato, our Dan 
Bukatinsky connection, says the world is a better place when we all find a way to contribute, when we can bring forward that special thing that we are or that we do. Thank you, ladies. You are inspiring. Um, Turco Ono wants to know where he can get the cookbook, but it's not a cookbook yet. It may be someday, but it's not yet, right? No, no, no. It's just, it's just online. Yeah. It's just, I mean, yep. because we don't know where it's going to go to. Sure. Sure. Um, um, he also wants to know, did you try any of these recipes? We already mentioned you did a couple. Um, which ones did you like the most? Which ones are your favorites so far? Well, the, I mean, I will say that, that Chris Colfer's cocktail was delicious. <laughs> it was <laughs> and and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a tequila girl, but not a mezcal girl. And that, it, I mean, it packs a punch. It definitely packs a punch. Um, and then I, on deck for me is, is Tony Truck's um, cookies. Because I, I tend to be a baker. I, like her, would bring stuff. Because my husband and my friends got sick and tired of me force feeding them. So I would bring them to work to the set and leave them in the makeup trailer and stuff like that. So I am on totally on board with her oatmeal yeah. deliciousness. Gina, anything pop for you? I'm going to go for the cobbler that we're going to have coming up. And you have no idea that yeah. that looks. I would bear that. Is the cobbler I, coming? <laughs> I would pretty, bear that cobbler. Hands. Is that right? Yeah. No, oh. it's, it's oh. strawberry. It's strawberry rhubarb. Strawberry rhubarb. Uh, and, and like that. she had just because of course she'd gone to the farmer's market that morning i'm like can, you can just picture bridget moynihan in connecticut going to the farmer's market and then whipping up this stunning homemade strawberry rhubarb I know, forget yeah. it i mean yeah. every you know but they're also good and some of them are really simple some of them are comedic we have um like our talk about high school friends. We have two high school friends, Mindy Cohn from the Facts of Life has got one coming and she's got a really simple one. Romy, you tell everybody what hers is. Well, no, I mean, she. I, I, I've had a couple of people say like, I don't cook. And because I want them to be in it, I am not, I'm not shy in that way. I'm like, well, so, so, so you don't cook. How about a bowl of cereal? How about, how about this? And Mindy Cohn said, um, how about a PB and J? I'm like, perfect. Yeah. What's great is that you can even you can even make a peanut butter and jam sandwich, which is what she called it, not peanut butter and jelly. You can make it sound fancy. Yeah. Our good friend, our good friend made um, the, which is in our first week, Tracy Bregman, who's on Young and the Restless, she did the perfect avocado toast. Yeah. So we have what we're going to gear up for is probably the later recipes <laughs> are going to be um, the healthy ones to have you go on a diet post our yeah. first three or four you weeks. Gotta, but, yeah. Yeah, we got yeah, you know, it's funny. No one mentioned they were talking about all the symptoms of this pandemic, but nobody mentioned how your clothes start to shrink on you during this. Exactly. Pandemic. Well, no, who's wearing clothing? I mean, <laughs> it's like in Zoom, you're only the, you're only from the waist up. Nobody's gotten out of sweatpants. Nope. Uh, that, Diana Prasad just we joined us. Say one quick shout out before we yeah. move on. We could not have done this. The other two people that are really oh, cool. 100%, 100%. Um, the other person, we, we would be remiss sitting here until we could to continue without two people. Annie Beck, who has become our creative director. She was a friend I called also like, I don't know how to do this. And she helped. And then our incredible art director, Miriam Duanel, who has who's, been incredible. And who's a genius. Great, yeah. great. Um, Diana Prasad is in now in the chat. Amy Alt is, says, I'm getting hungry. Uh, Becky Savell saying I love it all and I love Becky by the way Tammy T says I don't cook but this is making me want to um, Destiny Gay said same with me Tammy <laughs> and there we have it so I want to go into a little bit of uh, what you do Romy because we talked a little bit about what Gina does and let's fire it up with a photograph from one of your productions that was um that that was the wedding episode and um I, I my husband and I eloped and uh so I so I just felt like my mother still got to see me in a wedding dress glee right yeah yeah, yeah. that was yeah. second season that was a, so much fun except for that dress there were so many buttons and I had to be it it took forever so if you had to go to the bathroom I had to hold it for a really long time what do we got here Where, what's going on here that actually was um an episode that was after Cory Monteith had passed. And so we come back to the school and kind of are, you know, excited to see his, fr his friends carry on. Oh, that, yeah, that was a show that I did in Vancouver um, uh, called Beyond. I did two seasons for, uh, it was a freeform show, it was a sci-fi show, which was a blast. 
cool. Um, yeah, it was a blast. And there's that headshot. There's yeah. that smile. Yeah, there's that smile. There's I'm like, wait, that hair color. Hmm, I could go back. Some red carpet here. That was a little red carpet. I'm like, ooh, I gotta take those earrings out. And yeah. how's that? <laughs> that was so um, you know, agents and managers, they're very good at when you need to take a job, even if you think you don't. <laughs> and, this, and this one was something that my, uh, I lost both my parents within seven weeks of each other. And it was their memorial. And I got a call from my uh, agent saying, you have an offer. It was, it was a Thursday. She said, you leave for Montreal Tuesday. And I said, nope, their, their memorial is on Sunday. I cannot. She goes, yes, you're taking this no matter what. She goes, it may not be Shakespeare, but they are the loveliest people. You're number one. I mean, it was, and she was 100% right. And Kari Matchett, who's a fantastic actress, um, uh, and I just hit it off and we had a blast. And this, she had beaten me up. So that was the- oh, oh. So let me, you know, again, because we have a lot of young uh, or uh, early actors coming, coming in here to, the sh to listen what it wasn't just the role it was about the people you'd be working with 100 percent. and that's not that's not often taught that's not often talked about um when people are you know trying to get in or at least when young actors are starting out they don't think about that i didn't think about that you know like you're going to see these people again perhaps you know yeah and, i mean it's you and you it's for that community, I didn't know anybody because it was in Montreal and it's this one company, it's a French Canadian company that they do five of these a year, but it, it's, it's a family for a short amount of time. Yeah. And there, and I, there is nothing that I've ever done that replaces and gives you the feeling of being on a set. I grew up on a set cause my dad was, I was raised in the entertainment business. And um, so it's my happy place. What was he, what was his role? He was a producer. Got it. Um, Patricia Whitcast, a great friend of mine, beloved, has just joined us. Um, Tammy wants some of the pork chops. Elizabeth Harder says she burns everything. John <laughs> Harris just joined us. Uh, and Tammy's laughing about who wears clothes. Um, <laughs> Destiny, <laughs> Destiny Gay says, sorry for your loss. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you, Destiny. Um, so, I have another uh, photograph I want to show everybody because I, I want them to know because not everybody knows everybody by name and they need to know who your handsome darling husband is. Oh, <laughs> that was okay. Uh, there's a there's a lot going on here. First of all, <laughs> high heels just suck. That's that's one. But this was my sweet husband was um, nominated for an Emmy for the very first time. And so it was a, it was a to do, but he was also, if you can zoom in, he looks like a pedophile because there's a mustache, like, cause he was doing an epic, he was, he was also recurring in Perry Mason, which is going to be coming out on HBO. And yeah. he had a very, very thin 1930s yeah, mustache. It's a little, it's a little low resolution. And, and it, it was, it's, let me tell you, like, do not. I know you're, his, on him. I know you're his wife, but you got the Joe Biden hand. See the I, Joe Biden hand? I know. What are you talking about? He's taking care of you. He took, he's holding your shoes for you there. Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. It was good. Sweetheart. Yeah. He comes in handy. Uh, we're coming up on 1030. Our show ends in one minute. Um, I think the chatters would be cool if we continued on for a little longer. Let me know in the chat. Would you guys be cool oh, to go a little bit longer? Of course, oh, sorry, of correct. Um, and the, the great playwright, screenplay writer, Michael Swiske, just joined us. All right. So now, in order to go into overtime, because that's what I'm calling this, it, uh, we do this little game called Five Objects. I've been going nuts in my house. I've been here three months now. Um, and I've noticed things that I was like, wait, I didn't know I had that. Or what the hell am I still holding on to that for? So anyway, I'm going to show you an object real quick, go through five of them. Just give me your gut reaction to it, a little story, a little thought, whatever it is you feel or think. So here's the first one. Okay. Butterfly. Oh, I, oh, that that actually reminds me of um, a really good friend of Stevens who just loved butterflies. It gives me a warm feeling. Gina, butterfly. I wear them. I mean that that's my thing. I always bought like I just naturally gravitate to butter fabric with butterflies on them. So I always always people comment about that all the time. A roll of string. Uh. <laughs> I, I can tell you, I in one of my cooking adventures, I tried to make a turkey 
and I didn't have any string to, to, to put in to find the legs and I was it was a mess it was that was my big epic fail and it was hard to find during this time I would just say arts and crafts that's a, just arts and crafts oh microphone fancy oh. fun microphone no you know what that gives me heart palpitations because that makes me think of karaoke and that gives me heart palpitations in a scary way or an scary way in a please please don't ask me to do karaoke me me too all right <laughs> you know number, here's number three a work glove oh no that's got that's got michael jackson right <laughs> which is which that's is right. his jam <laughs> my goodness gina has the greatest michael jackson story the yeah. clock that's a whole other episode but we'll <laughs> You can email, you email Gina through the site at, at Staying Home Cooking and see if she'll send you the uh, the story. All right, here's the last one, number five. Oh, it's my oh my god, Joy! It's my very I, ice cream is my absolute favorite. Mint chocolate chip, Baskin Robbins. See, I would use that to make Vincent Spano's meatballs. I would take that and then I would ah. take a perfectly round, measured scoop from you my. Eventually, do that with matzo balls too. And the matzo balls. Or, or, or giant cookies. All right. So I asked you to bring in one object so we don't spend nights doing the whole night doing this. But go ahead. Who wants to go first? Show me your object. You go. The other, the other two of us will re respond. All right. I mean, I, I actually feel kind of pretentious doing this, but know that it, okay, I'm just not going to, oh, it's so friggin' heavy. <laughs> uh, is that a Golden Globe? It is. Oh. That's great. That's um, for me. That's uh, that's just makes me feel warm that that you you got one. You you're holding it and you care about it and you love it and it's it part of your my life. dad's. It was my dad's. It's your so, dad. Yeah, it was my dad's, and I so it sits proudly. Like I don't think I would. I, I really don't think I'll ever get one. But um, it was something that my brother took a different award and my sister took something else. I was like, can I get this? And it sits proudly above nice. our TV, and I just it, it makes me I, I get to think of him every day and be proud of what what he was nominated, what he won for. Gina, the okay. Golden Globe. Wait, before you show us yours, the Golden Globe. Any thought, reaction? Oh. Well, I I just I mean I think it's just again it's really wonderful to have Romy have that connection to her father, and it's where she learned so who she learned so much from, and again it sort of shows the level of her professionalism because she learned from the best. Oh, thank you. What's your option, Gina? Okay, not quite as important, but to me. <gasps> a big boy? Oh, no. Wow. So is that Abdows? Do, do you remember the, or is it just another icon? It, they had a similar icon. It's another, wow, that's, that's incredible. Rome, what are you thinking right now? That is un. Believable. I mean, that's honestly, I would, I will trade you the Golden Globe. Ah. Hands down. Hands You're both. down. Yeah. You know what they're doing, you know, Bob's Big Boy? It's a news item. They're bringing back the old uh, car hop because of everything. They will roll. They will bring it out to you curbside, just like the oldest. It's a throwback. It's nostalgic. On Riverside. Yes. Go there, and they will personally bring out, like the old car hop, your food. It is so good. Now, is that just a statue, or is that like a cookie jar? or a? No, it's actually, I bought it. Most people steal them. Don't steal mine, but it's a piggy bank. Oh, nice. I would have stole it. All right, I've got, I've, I've got a couple more minutes with you guys, so I'm going to make it worth even more than what we've already been doing, which is very worthwhile. By the way, Romy, Yes, you didn't sir. comment on my backdrop in honor of the cookbook. I know. I do. I actually noticed that. And it's very, I was like, that is classy. Yeah. Well, that, your big boy was actually a logo and a guy that, um, and Turco is um, confirming it, Abdow's Big Boy Restaurant. Oh. And they used, they used that same, that same guy. Um, and then now uh, Jack Fuller saying Bob's Big Boy ate there while he was in college at Bob's yeah. Big Boy. Bob's yeah. Big Boy. All right, real quick. I know it's hard to do quickly, but what's a key piece of advice from your point of view, Gina, as a producer and as a manager, and Romy, as from, from the point of view as a, an actor, a couple of tips that you have for young actors that are listening and watching right now. Like, what are a couple of things that you think are the most kind of important things that they really should know or think about? 
you you want to go? go? Ahead, yeah, go ahead, Romy. No, I, I mean, for me, and I've said this um, when I talk to classes and stuff, you have to love it more than anything else because the chances of you, it, it's a very low percentage of who makes it so-called, whatever that definition is, a big. So you have to love it. You can't imagine doing anything else. I mean, for me, there's, there, there is so much heartache in it, but there's so much joy when you get to work on any character. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you're being paid for it or not, but you, I, that's what I believe. You have to love it more than anything else. And then also, as Gina had said, get to know the business. It is a business. So, so that people don't, you know, get anything by you. Great. Thanks, Romy. Gina? Yeah, I'm, I'm in 100% agreement with Romy. I think it's, you're in it for the long haul. You have to have um, the commitment to stick through the good times, the bad times. Um, you have to do your homework, like I said, and really kind of know. Uh, and, I, and I think re respect the people that came ahead of you, really watch their performances and, um, you know, and, and just kind of get out there and do it. I think the the exciting part of what's happening right now is that um, people, you know, we don't know anymore, it makes it harder for someone like me, but we don't know where it's coming from anymore. And I think it's the good news, bad news, but I think it's sort of an exciting time. Someone can just put something out there and it catches on. And the next thing you know, it has its own life. And I think that brings up during this time, you're seeing how much creativity with people just from joke, viral videos, all kinds of things. It's a really, it can be a really creative time. I would use this time wisely in that regard. Great, thank you. Um, so that kind of almost ties into my next question. You know, it might be a year or two before we go back to sitting next to each other at a football game or at a movie theater or at a, a, a live theater at, on Broadway or off Broadway. Um, so how do you think things are gonna work for the next couple of years? Or let's say it lasts a year at the minimum because I think that's what's gonna happen. So. Where do you guys, where does your mind go? You guys are in this game. Where does your mind go? And, and I know it's affected you in different ways. Yeah. I got a panic. I, I mean, honestly, because I love what I do so much and the idea of not doing it um, with other people for a while just makes me sad. But I think that you just have to like, I, I, I did a web show called Bitter Party Five years ago that's still on YouTube and we're going to try to resurrect it just so we can stay creative and stay um uh, uh sharp yeah but yeah. you know it's like we have no i mean here's here's what we know the only constant we have no idea what's going to happen we right. really don't we have no idea and that's both exciting and petrifying to me exactly yeah okay gina you want to comment on that or i i'm using this time personally just to kind of have you know, sort of the other side of what clients do, a lot of them are producers or writers or directors or just trying to maybe think of material we can option for them. Other things, you know, I'm working on a documentary, just trying to kind of figure out how to use this time to get all those pieces together. But for going forward, um, it is a precarious time. You know, we don't really know. I think, you know, like the video on demand business is going to clearly grow, you know, whether people go back to cinemas and so forth and how we're going to make movies and television shows and do we sequester, you know, people, I, I don't know. So yeah, I'm not quite there yet. I think it's all, today I just got an email that was like really outlining some of the safety precautions a studio is going to take. And it was interesting, like, you know, one of the thoughts were they're going to, you know, not use extras. They're just going to do, um, computer digital extras and that scared me to death because my brother's an extra and that's how he makes a living and you know I just th those are things that'll be interesting and 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 maybe it'll all come back around you know just but right now people are gonna have to be flexible um and just kind of just keep working on your craft any way you can and just be ready to be ready I think is the only answer beautiful thing uh, my guys at VIP talent are doing that you know they are Right now, they're they're doing tons of online classes and they're drawing people in, and people are really getting into it, and making use of the time. Uh, quick shout out in the chat, and then I'm going to ask my final question. Um, Jack Fuller says, "Not much of a better way to show love than through the stomach." Learned this from my grandma as a kid. Great work, ladies. Um, here's the last question for each of you. Gina and Jose just entered. Hey, Jose. Gina, if you were not a manager or producer what would you have been or what would you be 
Romy, if you were not an actress, what would you be doing? What would you be? Uh, and, and that, while you asked me that question, my answer changed, which is crazy um, because I'm such an animal lover, but I honestly think I'd be a therapist. And, and that's just because it, in a way you're studying people and as an actor, you're studying people and learning about them. So that was, um, yeah, I think that's what I would do. Great, Gina? You know, I, it sounds like a really like fake answer, but I, I really love what I do. I can't really imagine not doing this. I might kind of go more into one, you know, producing or something like that, but I, I kind of really love it. And I've also, I'm, I'm in a mom. So, you know, that's been another career for me and I, and I'm proud of that. And um, so that's the answer. And I want to just before this ends, I want to commend you Galinsky because you're one of the people that have continued to always reinvent it. You know, you've used this time to start, start this incredible, you know, podcast essentially. And um, I think that's what he called it, a vidcast called podcast. And, um, and uh, you know, and just always thinking, always thinking. And I, I admire you for that. You. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been great. This has been time so well spent. Uh, people go see staying home cooking org go there you can uh get some great recipes obviously you can make some donations there um and also on instagram the whole check out what's, what's coming up cool um thank you guys for taking the time thank out you for having us you thank you to... what a joy yeah thank you um thank you fest is over the show is over the chat is hitting a hearts and likes and donate people donate if you can yeah, donate. Go to the site and make this even even a dollar. Even a dollar. Obama proved it. How oh, many yeah. people in twenty dollars and he had millions of dollars, right? Okay. So it doesn't take much. Maybe right after the show, two things to do. One, go make a donation at stayhomecooking.org. And then two, share the link of this show somewhere on Facebook or elsewhere. Thank you. Thank Let's you so much for having us, Robert. Oh. This is amazing. You're welcome. Tomorrow night, everybody, Larry Fessenden, independent filmmaker. Thanks, everybody. Ciao. Good night.